I'm the, I'm the baby of four children. And even from the time my mother was pregnant with me, um, I was never wanted by my father. I was sexually abused by my dad um, at the age of four. It started, it wasn't an everyday thing. I just thought growing up, that was normal. I thought that every child, that's how their father showed them love. My dad had a belt just for me and it was called the Black Mammy. And he would beat me so hard with this belt that right afterwards he would tell my mom to go take me shopping. She knew about it, but she was never allowed to talk about it. She feared my father as well. So the molestation did stop, but the abuse got worse. When I turned 12 years old, I turned to men. And as I got older, it's just my life just progressively got worse. I met the, my first husband. And, you know, me and him, we had a child together. I have a son. We lasted about nine months. In 2010, my world came to an end. My mom died. <laughs> that was um, my best friend. And when she died, um, my dad had a bottle of vodka in the garage and I grabbed it. Once I grabbed that handle, I never put it down. At that point, it was like, I didn't even care what I had to do for a roof over my head. I just did it. I met a guy online and we were talking for a few months and I eventually moved in with him. And then something just changed in him. Um, I was held hostage. I wasn't being fed. I was being beaten, raped every day. Um, I would actually have to crawl to the bathroom at night to just drink water out of a toilet. I was then on the, in the swamps, I had no way of knowing where I was. There was nowhere for me to go. I was chained to a mattress on a, on a floor, like this, this iron thing, it was horrible. This one night he had a gun in my mouth. He heard a noise outside. So he got up and he ran outside to go see what the noise was. And he brought the gun with him, but he left his cell phone sitting on that mattress. So I called my sister, Kristen, and I was like, listen, just please be quiet. Just listen, don't say a word. I don't care what you hear. So she listened to the entire rape going on, the beating, and um, he put the gun back in my mouth. But little did I know, or he knew, that my sister conferenced in 911. So they were able to locate my location and a SWAT team busted in. That was nothing but the hand of God. That was the, the moment that I totally told God, okay, now I know you're real. Like I got on my knees and I cried out. I mean, I just cried out. God, you gotta take this from me. I can't do it anymore. I give up. I just give up. Either kill me or help me. Help me know who I am. Like, this is not who you intended me to be. I've known Ginger, the director at Lynn Haven, for 10 years. And um, I called Ginger and I explained to her what was going on. I told her that I was extremely sick. When I came to the mission, it was like, God told me, he's like, you know, I, I planted that seed in you. Now this is your season to bloom. I'm gonna show you who you really are in me. I'm gonna take all those labels that everyone in your life has put on you and slowly I'm gonna tear them off. The process that God has taken me through has been Amazing. I started praying at night, God, if it's in your will, let it be done with restoration. My son got a hold of Ginger on Facebook and he asked her to tell me to call him, so I did. And in that conversation, he also called my daughter on three way that I haven't spoken to in five years. And I am now allowed to speak to her once a week when we do our phone calls. My son, after four years, came and visited me last week for the first time. It was amazing um, just to see the hand of God move, and my daughter is able to come for Christmas to see me. I'm telling you, I mean, I went from this wretched mess to literally in five months being restored back with my children, being able to look in the mirror and not hating the person. You know, and God is just training me up to just help other people because my story's for me, but it's also for somebody else. You don't have to stay in that victim role. I mean, I'm telling you, when you come to the knowledge of Christ, it's a whole different ball game, man. It's so, you see, I mean, I just get excited about it. It's like, I see things happen. Like, 
God is actually showing me His hand is in everything.